Uh, I have two questions for you. Um, first of all, what, what have you noticed um, in terms of comfort from KCP and, and, and speaking up and, and helping maybe guide younger players in a way that, that I don't know, that I've never really considered him a super vocal guy, but, but it seems like he's been more into that this year. Were you just in our practice, Dan? Like, where, did this, where does this question come from? He just said it. I'm a, like, oh, he I'm just a, said I'm it? A, okay, because, yeah, yeah well, well, we just – he was just doing that with Talon in practice, and we talked about that. So I was wondering how it, the information got to use. But if KCP, KCP said it, uh, but yeah, we made that that same comment. Is that you know he's I think he's in in the second year of our system, more comfortable and you know uh, more comfortable in his role. You know, and and when you when you get more comfortable in a system in a role. Um, you know, you're more confident uh, to to step up in leadership situations and help uh, someone like Talon uh, with some coverages or things like that. I mean, you know, KCP was, uh, you know, drew the, the, the biggest assignment um, defensively uh, on a championship run. You know what I mean? So he's got a, a pretty strong pedigree there. And, um, you know, to see him sharing some of his knowledge and helping some of the young guys is, uh, you know, it's a, it's a good sign. Right. The other question I had was, um, Montrez has shown a little bit of, of the face-up game with uh, not just putting the ball and kind of going to the rim, but like stepping into 16, 17 footers. Is that a good shot for you guys? Do you like that he's doing that? Um, yeah, well, I think with all our guys, we you know we have to keep defenses honest. Whether that means you know them going under the pick and rolls on LeBron and him shooting over the top, or you know if Trez is going to have it in the post, you know if if, it, if a player is just going to back up on him, it, it makes it harder to score at the rim. So. Uh, you know, in some ways, uh, in everything we do, you have to take what the defense gives you, and he, he's shown the ability to knock that shot down, so he has the green light to take it. Brad? Good afternoon, Frank. How you doing? Great, man. Oh, it's BT? I didn't know who it was, BT. Sorry. No, no, it's just me. Nobody special. <laughs> when you do have a chance to have a practice, and after you watch a film session, how much sharper have you noticed your team becomes when you play games after a real good practice session? Well, we'll see. I, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to jinx us for tomorrow, <laughs> um, and say that it, there's always direct carryover. Uh, it's not always direct, um, but the the daily process that we have of really talking about our, our habits and our details and our execution pieces and. Uh, the terminology, you know, all those, all those types of things, um, you know, have a long, more of a long-term effect. And, you know, we had a, a very productive uh, practice from that standpoint. Now, does that mean, you know, all of it is going to show up in tomorrow's game? You know, hopefully, but not necessarily. You know, I, I just think there's a, a bigger picture, um, you know, element to, you know, these types of practices and these types of film sessions. Yovan, I'm sorry, Yovan. Hey, Frank. Um, last night, AD talked about how he's been learning from Mark and LeBron how to see the floor and, and pass better. Uh, I'm curious what type of progress you've seen from his passing this season, particularly out of double teams. Yeah, well, his, his passing out of double teams is, uh, to me, night and day better than where it was uh, at this point last year. You know, I, I think he really grew towards the end of the season last year in the bubble and in the playoffs where, where the games mattered more. And, um, you know, I think he's he's really grown, uh, you know, into this year with, with regard to that. Uh, last night I thought he, he had a great passing night, even though he only had one assist. Um, and we highlighted that in the film session today. He, he made a number of extra passes that um, we didn't get to pay off uh, with a made shot or a made finish or there was a foul or, or an extra pass. Um, you know, after that, but you know, I, I thought he had a great passing game last night, even though he didn't get it rewarded on on the uh, on the stat sheet. So you know, definitely growing in that area. Eric Williams. Hey Frank, I know you guys have kind of emphasized making the extra pass, but how do you balance looking for that perfect pass versus taking a, a good shot within the offense for the person that you want shooting the ball, and then just overall in terms of taking care of the ball offensively. You guys had a good, uh, a good night of that the other night, but overall kind of been up and down. Yeah, we haven't been great with our turnovers, um, you know, and that's part of, 
you know, the, the nature of the early part of the season. Uh, but we did take care of it well last night. Our two uh, primary ball handlers, Dennis and LeBron, combined for 13 assists, two turnovers. Uh, that's a great night uh, for us regard, with regard to that. And, you know, we're, we're trying to play extra pass basketball, but also recognize, you know, the, the, the shot that comes from the rhythm of the offense, you know, and uh, making sure we're not overpassing, which we do on, on occasion. But to me, that, that's okay. You know, uh, I'd rather overpass than, um, you know, not pass enough. Um, but we definitely want to uh, have that identification piece of, of what's the best shot in the, uh, from the rhythm of the offense. It looks like we have one last question, Brian Kamenetsky. Hey, Frank. Um, I know you talked about kind of the first few weeks of the season being a, a building process and things like that, almost like an extended training camp. How much flexibility does winning games give you in being able to, you know, kind of do the things you want to do, experiment lineups, give guys the days off that they need and all that stuff? I mean, I think it helps, but, you know, we want to, we want to manage the, the season um, – outside of the wins and losses you know what I mean our, our daily process you know we, we have a, a pretty steady tone with our teaching um, you know that removes whether we won or lost the game you know um, there, there's lessons to be learned in every game um, so it, that's that sort of applies to our process uh, and I would say that in, in, in terms of your question managing you know different uh, combinations and who's in who's out uh, those types of things um, you know I think we also, uh, try to remove, you know, where we're at in the standings and, and, and all those types of things, and just just have a mindset to grow throughout the year, and um, you know, hopefully land in a in a spot where we're uh, positioning ourselves second half of the year to go into the playoffs, playing the best basketball of the year.